Yo, what's up, Serpa Squad? Tanner here, and in this one, I'll set up another low tech aquascape. I'm using a 14.2 gallon SR Aquaristic Grinless Aquarium for this scape. This tank will go on the rack I built a few months back that holds the 16 gallon scape. Anyway, let's get to work. Typically, I save this for the end of the project, but I started by putting the SD decal on the front of the tank. There are a few other things I did prior to scaping it. First, I turned the tank on its side and taped off the edges. I'm using Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover Black Latex Paint to cover the back of the tank. A small nap ruler was used to apply five coats, allowing the paint to dry between each application. After allowing it to dry, I removed the tape. Turn the tank upside down to incorporate a self-leveling mat. This is just some 1 quarter inch thick neoprene with an adhesive backing. I unrolled a pre-cut piece and carefully stuck it to the bottom of the tank. This will mitigate any potential issues caused by inconsistencies in the stand, allowing the tank to sit as evenly as possible. The tank was then turned to its upright position. Now it's ready to be scaped. To scape this setup, I'm using exclusively Hakai Stone I bought months ago at Aquashella. I've been saving these for an Iwagumi or stone only aquascape since that time. It's a beautiful and sought after stone with a subtle aquamarine hue. Unfortunately I don't have many to work with, so I have to use egg crate light diffuser and insulation foam for additional height. My vision is to set this up as an islandscape of sorts. I want a few isolated hardscape formations with a clean and simple layout elsewhere. This will make sense as we go through the build. Anyway, I tried several stone arrangements before I made something I liked. Initially I wanted three islands, but I couldn't get it to look right with this selection of stones. What I ended up with were two islands and a path between. This layout probably doesn't make sense now, but with a few adjustments it will look much better. For that I'll utilize a few materials including polyester fluff and moisture wicking fabric. I used the nylon batting to fill cracks between the stones. This will act as a barrier for the substrate, keeping it separate from the rest of the setup. It will also create additional landmass to compensate for the lack of stones. For substrate, I'm using a repurposed mix from an aquarium I just dismantled. It's a combination of fluval stratum, sea chem fluorite, gravel, and sand. I filled in all of the spaces behind the stones to create a good foundation for plants. Once I had the base layers down, I topped everything off with a fresh layer of fluval stratum. I did this for a more cohesive look and for more nutrients since the repurposed stuff has some age to it. With the substrates in place, I concealed the nylon with pieces of the moisture wicking fabric. This will be a perfect growing surface for moss and it will hide off the nylon. As I placed the pieces of fabric, I sprayed them with water so they lay in the cracks better. Here's what I ended up with. This should give you a much better idea of how the scape will look. I'll cover the fabric with a layer of java moss and suswasser tongue that I chopped up into small pieces. This mixture was attached to the fabric with cyanoacrylate superglue gel. This is safe to use with livestock once it's dry and will anchor the moss in place before it attaches to the fabric on its own. A little bit of glue goes a long way. I put dabs throughout and covered them with the moss mixture. After placing everything, I gave the tank a good spray to keep the moss hydrated. For the remainder of the plants, I have a good variety including Bulbitis hutiloti, Cryptocorn wenti bronze, Echinodorus tenilus, Ludwigia repens rubin, Micromeria brownae, Pogostemon stellaris octopus, Rotala nonjenshan, Rotala indica, and Valisneria americana. I typically like to plant these setups when they're full of water and from the background to the foreground. However, I'm planting this one dry to keep things cleaner. I started in the foreground with the crypts. These will be a nice pop of texture and color when the tank fills in. The chainswords were planted throughout the foreground as well. They won't grow much taller than they are now and will be a perfect foreground plant.
The bulbitis was planted atop the highest structure in the tank. Although this is near the back of the tank, it will act as a mid-ground element. From there I added stems of Rotala indica on both islands as a background plant. During the entire planting process, I periodically sprayed the tank to keep the plants hydrated. After that I planted the Pogostemon and Ludwigia on the large island as background plants. Next was the Creeping Charlie. I filled in the remainder of this island with stems of Rotala non-genson. Lastly, I planted all of the jungle vow on the left island. Everything looked to be in order, and I filled the tank with water. I did this to ensure I liked how all of the plants looked, and to remove any floating debris. It looked good, so I drained the water and put it on the stand. With the tank in place, I added the remainder of the substrate, which is carob sea white moonlight sand. It was poured throughout the tank and distributed with a brush. Now let's get this thing filled with water. I used Fritz ACCR water conditioner which was provided by our channel sponsor to dechlorinate the water. I slowly filled the tank so nothing was disrupted. While the tank filled I set up an AquaClear 20 with pre-cycled biological media. I added some Fritzheim Turbo Start 700 which was also provided by our channel sponsor. Along with the filter media, this will jumpstart the cycle of the tank so we can immediately add livestock. For those of you wondering, I'm lighting this tank with a Nikru Classic LED. Now then, let's add the fish. I've had my eye on these for some time now. They were at my local fish store for months and no one was buying them. I finally decided to get them myself. These are Volcano Rasbora. I think they're a beautiful fish and something different from what you typically see. I also added 4 olive nerite snails, 2 horn nerite snails, and 4 mono shrimp. I should also mention that all of these critters went through quarantine prior to being added to the scape. And there you have it, the Hakai Stone Islandscape. I think it turned out really well, showcasing the fish and stones perfectly. It's something different than what I've shown on the channel thus far. I think it's a welcome addition to the animal room though. As I said earlier, my vision was to create an islandscape of sorts, with densely planted islands and a lot of open space. I can't wait to see how it looks as all of the plants become well established. What do you think though? Do you like how the scape turned out, and what do you think about the fish? I likely add more in time, but these are what I had at the moment and who I made the scape for. Anyway, I really like how it turned out and I can't wait to see its progression. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this one and learned something new. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace. <laughs>